Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, we're having some fantastic uh, conversations. We were just talking before the before the before the break about um, all the various um, administrative and, and and coordinating the calendar, and of course the fact that a lot of people do maybe a coach and a player and a player and a referee and so on. Faisal, you you were telling me an interesting story about a player who was the medic. Yeah, so I mean, <laughs> you know, so so the, the the big thing is you had some of the club yeah, guys. Yeah, Yeah, so you had one of the club guys. Basically, you know, he was the chairman of the club. He was also the medic of the club, but he was also a player. Yeah. And the guys, you know, when there was an injury, I said, "That's how are you going to manage if you're playing?" He said, "No, no, he's there. He's first on the field. He can sort, you know, he can deal with a medical crisis, whatever happens." So he said, "Okay, that's all good and well, but what happens if you're the guy that's injured? How are you going to deal with it?" <laughs> it's like. Never thought of that. Uh, sure, so I think, yeah. you know, JP, it boils down, you know, I think from the officer side, it's just making sure we have the structures in place and support roles that people identify what the role and function is at the club. Yeah, but quite fantastic to, to, to have that sort of, those sort of individuals who are just prepared to commit and help. Um, Jerome, how much of a, of a challenge is that when you have um, uh, the player-coach scenario? Because we, we see that. I mean, you're the player and the coach, which means probably you're going to be the captain as well. Um, but I always feel that, that if, if you've got these dual roles, it's difficult to focus. It's difficult to do both. And, and, and I quite sometimes it, it, feel like the, the coach is trying to carry the team. Yeah, it just depends, JP. It depends on, on, on exactly if the guy knows what's his role or whatever. And, and obviously, if you play a coach or you play an assistant coach, then um, you must understand that um, there's, uh, there's only certain things that you can do. You're not in control because you still have to focus on playing. You still have to focus on yeah. playing. So you're not in control of the referee. You're not in control of the whole team because you have to focus on your own game also. So, so that's tough. Yeah. I've, I've done it when I played in, in Italy. Our, uh, the, 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 coach, the coach got uh, sick. So for two months, I had to coach and, and I play. had to play. But oh, like right. I say, so you just have to understand that's not your first job. You're still a player. Uh, so focus on your playing. But I think that that's different. I think it's different when you're when you're the player and the coach gets six. Somebody steps in. You know that's that's one thing. When you're the player, the coach gets sick or can't get a ride or stuck in the traffic. You step in. You say, right, guys, we're starting the practice. Whereas it's different when you're the coach, and you say, now I'm going to I'm, I have to play on Saturday. Exactly. You know. No, that's that's exactly. It doesn't it doesn't work like yeah. that. I don't think it can work like that. Because we we see sometimes the coach says, I um I, I'm the I used to play centre, you yeah. know. Um, I better I, I they're going to need me on the field. There's a few <laughs> few a few of these yeah. instances uh, that guys <laughs> Faisal, you know, when you watch club rugby, then the coach. I mean, he's still in there, young enough, and he, but he just retired. But now things are not going smoothly on the field. Then he runs onto the field. Oh, it's God. actually a bigger disaster. <laughs> <laughs> you're not fit. Yeah. You're not strong but enough. But work. you want to. Because yeah. you, you, you feel you can. <laughs> you feel but that. you can't actually. But I think like, just on that, JP, I mean, years ago, I still remember, you know, we go and do our club audits. You're sitting there, you come to a club. You sit in the box. You're watching the medics. Uh, you're checking the management, everything else. Standing there next to you, all of a sudden, half time, you look a game. But there's a coach in the field. He's actually not playing. <laughs> uh, he's had enough of the guys and that he feels he needs to take matters in his own hand, and he's running out on the field. <coughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think um, I think this is what we're talking about: is that that ability to, um, to 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 focus on your roles. Uh, but I, I think also, Faisal, that one of the things that I would like to see in in the club space is. Um, uh, that clubs really do need to make an effort to recruit volunteers. We see so many clubs are still um, using only the players and the members that they've got. But there are so many passionate fans mm. around the field. They've been there for years. They support the club every day. And, and, and I hear it quite often from, from, you know, from clubs or, or sports structures who say, we just don't have enough people. Yeah. You know, we're, we're stretched, we can't do all these meetings and so on. But, but recruiting volunteers, more people, into your space that you can train and teach yep. to do, maybe they do the media, maybe they do the gate, maybe they do, you've got to bring more people on board yep. at a management level. 
No, 100%. I think the one thing, I, you know, I always say we can never fault our club guys with passion on that. And I think that's what makes our work a lot easier, myself and Denzel, is that the passion is there. But I think a lot of the times we want to do stuff on our own because we feel it's going to happen. But I think, you know, we need to actually put it out there. Like you said, you know, there's a lot of spectators and people who you need to identify and see what, you, what is their strengths and see how they fit in, you yeah. know, at the club. It might be on a Saturday. Um, you know, just being around, putting up the flagpoles, um, you know, standing at the gates, whatever it is. But I think the key thing is just making sure that <laughs> you've got these guys available. How do you use them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just sitting here wondering now, why is Jerome laughing? He's obviously got a story <laughs> in his head. There, it's, 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 it's correct what you say, Faisal. Now, this guy putting up the flagpoles. Now, Monday evening, the coaches sit and they talk about players. Then guess this guy's got the most to say about the players. It's, but... What you were saying is about understanding the role. So that's why certain clubs don't want too many people involved because then this guy, he wants to tell the chairman, he wants to tell the coach, and he must just fill the water bottle. Now, so <laughs> now that, 100%. 100%. So, but Jerome, what you've, just, what you've just explained is exactly one of the elements that was touched on in the leadership course, mm. is talking about understanding things like protocols, Training people to understand protocols, training them to understand that once policy is in place, once the rules are in place, and and the other thing is, if, are we still going to talk more about the leadership side of uh, the leadership your leadership workshop, but um, but Faisal, one of, one of the the one of the key things like what Jerome was just talking about is is that sharing of knowledge. Yeah. I mean, we've we see it before sometimes, um, like let's say as an example, a team gets selected. Um, but now, if you're not in the selection panel, you don't understand all the details of why a team maybe was selected. So from the outside, when you're sitting on the sofa watching it on TV, you, 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 you maybe don't have the right context yeah. because you weren't there. And this is why the, the, the sharing of knowledge is so important. 90%. I think, again, like Jerome says, it's like defining the roles. Yeah. Letting the person understand what exactly is his role. When do you pitch up? What do you do? What do you need to do? And I think, again, I mean, like you mentioned now, you know, the guy that's, um, that's carrying the water, uh, the water bottles is now giving insight. He's yeah. even recruiting players. Yeah. I mean, I know one club in particular, there's a guy there that's probably been there for the last 15 years. That's a professional job the water carrier, yeah. because he also recruits players as well, and he's out there looking for players as well, you know. So I think, you know, the passion is there, JP, but I think as leaders, and I think that's why the leadership course is important, we need to define what the roles are, mm. and we need to define, okay, so what is the process with regard to the guy helping on Saturday? What is his role? What is his function in that day? And that's the key, how yeah. to manage people and how to utilize in terms of the services. Jerome is dying to say something. No, I'm not sure what it is, but he's no, dying. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> knows exactly what, what we were talking about because there's so many times that people come, like when I'm still coaching, whether it's Curry Cup or under 21s, yeah. they say yeah. they want to come shadow, they want to just come see what you do. <laughs> the next thing you see, if you're busy with a line out, yeah. this guy's explaining he's to, to you. Your, he's explaining to your players. He's standing next to the hooker. He's standing yeah, he's next explaining to the, the guy what he must do. <laughs> So now I think, but this guy just asks, you want to come see what you do. So that's exactly why coaches don't want yeah. people on the field. <laughs> All right, folks, we've still got, a, we've got so much to still talk about. Uh, just some key elements that we are going to, we're going to show you some highlights from Violet's training session. Of course, uh, this is just a reminder then to the clubs out there. Um, you can send us your little videos. Uh, we'll come to you on the opportunities that we can. And of course, send in your, your sponsor logo together with that and um, what we are trying to do and we'll still be talking a lot about that during the during the course of the year is how do you get sponsorship at a club level um, and of course local business need to get behind your club and the way to do it is to offer local business um, some branding some exposure and a, and, a, and a mechanism to be involved with your club it also creates a fantastic employment opportunity um, at your club space. So coming up still tonight, we're going to be, uh, when we come back from the break, we're going to be taking another look at some of our women's training uh, sessions that's of course happening at the High Performance Center in Belleville every Saturday. Faisal and Jerome will be able to tell me more about that. And of course the fixtures, the friendly fixtures have been rolling out and uh, we're going to take a look at that. And of course we're also going to talk about the league fixtures, safeguarding and the leadership workshop 
that took place um, this, past, uh, this past Monday. We'll be back after the break. Don't go away.